The operation is initiated with a midline incision made from xiphoid to above the umbilicus. A wound retractor is placed and the Thompson is set up. Scoops are placed under the ribs to retract superlaterally on the right and left sides. Using a combination of electric cautery and the use of a vessel sealing device, we dissected to enter into the lesser sac. Once adequate mobilization is achieved, the right gastroepiploic is identified and then divided using a stapler with a vascular load. Retracting the stomach caudally, we then opened the gastrohepatic ligament close to the liver. A common landmark is the hepatic artery lymph node overlying the hepatic artery, which thereby helps with identification of the right gastric artery. The right gastric artery is then divided. This can be completed with a vessel sealing energy device. The next step for the operation is the transection of the duodenum. This is done just distal to the pylorus, utilizing a reinforced staple load. Further mobilization of the stomach is achieved through division of the short gastric vessels. Special attention is made to ensure that the posterior branches are also divided to avoid any unwanted bleeding. Here, you can see the left gastric pedicle. Using electric cautery, the tissue is scored along the left and right crus. Once the tissue has been adequately dissected, you see the nice release of the distal esophagus into the abdominal cavity. The left gastric pedicle is then divided using a stapler with a vascular load. At this point, we are ready for the division of the distal esophagus. First, the esophagus is tagged with 3 OPDS. The point of division is about one centimeter above the GE junction. After successful division of the esophagus, the gastric specimen is taken off the field with a proximal margin marked and sent to pathology for frozen. While waiting pathology's evaluation, we turn our attention to the jejunal limb. Approximately 20 centimeters distal to the ligament trites, the jejunum is divided with a stapler. The mesentery is divided, taking special care to preserve the arterial arcades. A defect is then made in the mesocolon through a bare area. Next, the rule limb is brought through the mesocolonic defect in a retrocolic fashion. Once we have confirmation that our margins are negative for gastric mucosa, it is time for our esophagojejunal anastomosis. An esophagotomy is made in the middle of the staple line. Next, the esophagus is tacked with 3 OPDS at the 11, 1, and 6 o'clock positions. Tacking allows us to secure the mucosa and prevent retraction during the anastomosis. An enterotomy is then made in the rule limb with electric cautery. A linear stapler is utilized to create a side-to-side -side anastomosis. This type of anastomosis is utilized to help reduce stricture rate. The common channel is then closed with interrupted 3O PDS sutures that are tagged and then tied down in a sequential fashion. A side-to-side jejunostomy -side is made, ensuring we are at least 50 centimeters downstream of the rule limb. Mm -hmm. 
Enterotomies are created with electrocautery. A stapler is used to create the anastomosis, and the common enterotomy is oversewn with a running 3-0 PDS. Next is closure of the small bowel mesenteric and Peterson defects. To complete the case, the abdomen is closed in a standard fashion. No drains or NG tube are required. 